Hey everybody, I'm gonna try to knock this one out. Um, not sure if I can do it in one sitting, but I don't have Uber running, so I do have a little over an hour with which I can finish this. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be enough time to like completely finish the color and everything, but um, we're gonna give it a shot. So we are still working on the um, line art here, and I'm gonna try to finish that off. Uh, now, I just gonna fix a couple things, something that I just noticed, like the muscles, well, the pex doesn't seem like it's in the right spot so i'm kind of just gonna make a quick adjustment there get stay in layer five yeah make sure i'm on the right brush yeah okay so i just finished listening to a harvard business um, lecture and i think it's amazing that they put it online for free because those students sitting in the class, you know, they're, they're the ones doing the assignments. They're probably going to get the most, most benefit out of, um, you know, being in that class. But the fact that it's accessible to me and it was such a wonderful lecture um, gave me gave me a lot of frameworks for, for business models um, just to think about and try to iterate on for myself. Um, it's something I can tackle for my own personal business. Now, one big, not, not breakthrough, uh, that's not the right word, but a big opportunity I have is that so a year ago i took a project where i did a mural for a church i did it for free um you know i just felt the inspiration and and just the the opportunity almost a serendipity where um i was able to use my talent for something good when in the past i've used it for things that are not so good or things that are just not very meaningful like doesn't really establish any valuable legacy for me or my family and art became this thing sort of became this indulgent thing that um you know i can do commissions for people over and over and over but um and you know it might make a nice difference in their lives but um i don't know it, it just didn't feel like i was having a real impact because the, or the original reason i wanted to get into art was to tell stories that were valuable to me now over time, I, I, I started you know creating my own individual uh, individual like passion projects that you know with that kind of thing it's hard to take off because I mean just the competition is so steep and I didn't have any particular advantage. Well, I did, but I didn't really take advantage of them because the disadvantages that I found were more in my personality and my work ethic than the actual stuff I was making. Um, not that I think that the stuff I was making had any particular advantage. It's just that the, the greater disadvantage was just in me, right? So it wasn't until I started to address that in the past year or so that, you know, I started, like, being more financially, I don't want to say successful because I, I don't even think that's a word to describe me in, in any capacity. But more stable is a good way of putting it like I'm not successful but I'm a lot more stable than I was last year and and that's good and that's that's a that's a blessing from God now um, last year uh, though I didn't get paid right I did I did it as a donation to the church and I thought you know what I, I never do things for exposure or I you know as an artist I've been I've sort of learned over time that you should not really do things if if the payment is gonna be you know exposure unless you know for a fact that millions and millions of people are gonna see your work and find it good then maybe maybe you can do something without pay because maybe that level of exposure will benefit you in the long run and there's a trade-off there there's a trade-off pay versus exposure you I, you never really want to compromise but in this case I felt okay um, I've been going to that parish since I was pretty young um, I've kind of followed their growth and I've always felt that they needed, you know, something they needed more and, and still to this day, they're still a growing parish and there's, there's always like pain points and growth, growth points that any community can find. But it was a really a, a moment of triumph for, for when that church finally opened up their new building, you know, with my painting in it. And it's like, wow, you know, I contributed to something, um, important, really important and, and monumental for this community where they finally built a big building. They had the bishops come and. They had the priests come and they had their first mass and it, it was it was awesome it was beautiful and i felt like i was a part of it um 
and did I get a lot of exposure for that? Well, here's the thing. Not a lot of, because I, I, I don't hang around the church enough. And I told myself, you know what? I would hang around the church. I'm actually parked in front of it right now. Um, I would hang around the church to maybe give myself, you know, let myself be social, let myself be known, and maybe give myself opportunities for, for business if people know I'm the painter. Now, in the past year, I have not really taken advantage of that. It's been, you know, eight, nine months now since I finished the painting, and I haven't really gone out of my way to market myself and that's that's still something i that's still an open top open opportunity that i can address however it still worked out in the sense that the exposure the the priest who is here moved to another church and he talked to another priest who has been dreaming about having a painting in his church done for years and he he saw a picture of my painting and and he, they reached out to me the priests and they're like hey you know we're interested in having this in our parish so I just took I just took a trip over there yesterday to check out the the blank walls of that church. It's roughly the same size as this mural, maybe even bigger, if because you if you consider the um, priest is having is considering having me do more than one wall, uh, three walls adjacent to each other. And so it would be another big project, and I have experience, and it's really interesting. It's like, um, am I going to be the muralist for the rest of my life? I don't know, and that's not something I can decide. But I'm taking the opportunities for work that God is giving me through through um, the painting of the church. Um, and the exposure uh, paid off in this sense because the church that I'm gonna go to, they are they are planning on paying me um, some compensation for this for this new painting. Um, we haven't decided the, the terms yet, but you know the priests let me know, hey, we're gonna make sure this is paid work. And I think that's that's wonderful for me. That's great for me, that's great for my family, and hopefully great for the church if I do a good job, you know? And I, I'm obviously, I don't want to half-ass it. I want to do a great job for a parish, especially if it's going to be acrylic paint. It's priest vision he's had for like four years. I want to make sure I live up to that. So, um, I'm going to do a little bit of like power, like kind of like winding up the power for, for the punch here. Just kind of make it like graphical and comic booky. Before I move on with my topic. Hmm, if I, hmm, hold on, the strokes are wrong. If I do those little curvy shapes, it looks like energy is kind of coming out from it. I want to make it look like the energy is coming in. Like he's winding up energy. So I think we will do converging lines. I think that looks a little bit better. Lots of undos here. a little bit I'm trying to get those con lines converging to like s roughly the same area I think that's good um, let's have some more lines here on top of the on top of the close too so that it's so that it's radial Okay, so we got a we got a little wind up there. So now we're gonna throw in a base color. We're gonna do a darkish tealish blue. Now I have a general idea of what the colors are supposed to be. So let's kind of switch gears here now. Um, turn call this layer color. And can we do it in one layer? I think so. Now I know he wanted his skin to be blue green. Um, we're just gonna start with our inking, uh, our painting brush and make our eraser the same. Okay. So now we're gonna get in there and we're gonna color fill. Oh, so it should be below. Uh, this might be a little bit dark. So we'll get the whole thing filled up. We'll, we'll do an alpha lock and then we'll set the base colors for everything. So 
it's another one of those things where oh yeah you know what let's let's try the strategy where we do color fill yeah so let's do this we're gonna follow the contour here sometimes I can stroke it sometimes I can tap it So whenever I do a task that kind of turns my brain off, I want to throw in some banter. So I've been thinking about what I could do to improve my business. Um, you know, I'm just a freelance artist. That's the only thing I do that's like really independent. Like I do a lot of flexible work. I have a part-time job. Um, but the opportunity for growth really uh, relies on business, um, at least for now, because I'm, I'm also working toward a degree in accounting. And even then, um, I know that, uh, like, I, I want to join a firm, but having my own business is, would always be the ideal thing um, in the long term. You know, get the most uh, agency, get the most, um, I guess, control over the fate of my finances. Um, so, I mean... Obviously, I think I would want to start in an entry-level accounting firm first. But there's like so much opportunity there that if I'm doing accounting for people, just keeping track of their stuff, um, I could do things like business consulting, financial consulting. Um, I don't think CPAs are considered financial advisors. I think that would be like a different um, title. And I, I wouldn't necessarily ever have to leave my art because the thing is, if, if the need is for me and I'm the supply, my time is a supply, you know, I already have a business model for that. So I could make it so that my business applies to anything that anyone would need from me. It would be more of a service oriented um, business which for the most part I've only really worked in service type businesses like even now I work in retail um, like I sell the goods but I'm not making the goods what's interesting is that in my study of accounting um, because I don't um, own stock in the company I work for and because I'm a, uh, you know a hourly employee I'm not really considered um, internal <laughs> to the company. I mean, I work for them. I, I know some information, but I'm actually more of a um, an expense to the company because uh, wages and salaries are considered expenses. I mean, even if you're paying your own wage and salary, but um, yeah, it's not the same as having uh, equity. I'm an ex I'm I'm part of the equity equation. But I'm an expense. So it's, it's funny to think of it that way. Not funny, but eye-opening to think of it that way. To know, you know, how valuable am I to the company. I'm not that valuable. I'm valuable. Well, I am. I am valuable in the sense, I mean, I'm, I'm an employee. And they treat us, they treat us well. But I could, it's rather there's so much room for growth and how valuable to the company I, I can actually be. Now, in my own personal business, I'm critical to the company but I don't know how good my goods, goods and services actually are. It could be that they're not very good. So for that, it's just a matter of like, ooh, did I, does, is it gonna fill? Oh my goodness, did I lose my selection? Color fill. Um, let's see here. Let's grab that color. Shoot. Oh, there we go. I think I lost my selection, but that's okay. I think I leaned forward and then it's suddenly gone, but that's okay. We got a lot of it. We'll just fix the rest. We'll fix this part. Okay. We want this to be a little bit more on the teal side too. Let's color drop the whole thing again. Okay. 
A little lighter. Okay. So you know what, I, like I said, I, I like thinking out loud and over time on YouTube and Twitch, as long as I think this out loud, I might be able to get something concrete. Um, it's not, I mean, this has become a bit of a journal for me, to be honest. Like I know people watch these and some of these videos get a lot of views, but interestingly, one of my recent videos I got more views, like a hundred views, was um, spending silence drawing the Virgin Mary. So it's like, I, I never really know. I thought that would be a useless video because I didn't have the banter and I wasn't talking. But this time, I mean, as long as I just keep putting out the videos, I, you know, um, the consi let's get the consistency down first, because it, it doesn't really come at any cost to my time spending, my time spent uh, making these artworks. Um, it doesn't really break my concentration that much. So, um, okay, so we got this color. Now we'll we'll put in an alpha lock. Let's create a skin color. We wanted bluish green. Probably going to be a little spotty. So let's find, let's get a big, bigger brush here and let's find the area where he's going to be here. Now, I was making palettes in my previous videos, but now instead of like making the palette and making it separate, I'm just going to define it and then just use the eyedropper. Because that's essentially what it what it is that's happening that... I'm just kind of eye dropping from the color that I pick. So if I just put it right directly on the canvas or directly on the figure, um, I can just grab it from, from there. Oh, I, I remember I changed my uh, eye dropper to, to the squeeze tool. So um, we're gonna make that adjustment right now. Cause I was tapping to get my squeeze, uh, tapping to get my eye dropper, but uh, my tap now is the quick menu. So that's my new change. And it, it does feel faster to squeeze to eyedrop instead of tap. Now, the, the only thing I mainly use tap for is to, um, uh, on, only thing I really use quick menu for is to mirror the image. So, let's lower, lessen the threshold. Yeah. So we got the skin color here. I think this is pretty good. Just sort of block off the hand from the rest of the body. And then we can eye drop that. Whoops. Ooh, merge down. I don't want to do that on accident. That's not good. Um, I had an alpha lock on a single shortcut in Krita, so it's kind of tedious to have to uh, select the layer every time and then do the two finger swipe, and sometimes it fails. Ultimately, I want every every function to be faster than Krita, <laughs> you know, as I as I use this uh, program, but might not always be the case. Okay, so for now, we'll take this color and we'll just put this color in the beads. I still don't enjoy coloring as much as, you know, doing the sketches in line art, but I got to trust the process because I think I just got to get better at it. And in general, you know, I've been talking about, you know, the virtue of mortification and diligence and resilience and um, just got to power through things that I don't like for now. You know, eventually I'll, I'm sure eventually I'll like it. Don't want to be spoiled. So yeah, um, as soon as I finish this, uh, this piece, I don't want to rush it, but as soon as I finish it, I'm going to go, um, you know, record my work on the, uh, on the, um, church. Cause I'm going to do it digitally first. That's what I told the, uh, priest. I'll send him some drafts and I was hoping I can get some drafts done like yesterday or tonight, but I'm, I'm not going to rush it. Um, you know, we're going to take our time. Just want to make sure it's good for the church. And, um, I mean, I, but I don't want to be slow, you know, I, I want to make sure I serve them well. Because um, it, it ultimately it's for my family as well. It all circles back to my family for me. Um, I know I should serve the church and that's good. I can serve the church. 
I know I should take care of business, you know, do work and that's good. But for me, you know, what is it all for? It's, it always comes back to the beloved, which is my family. And that, you know, that um, idea of like having energy to do these things. Like I said, I was spoiled. I used to want to rely on like, oh, do I feel good? Am I ready to do this? How, is this easy for me? And it's like, those are all kind of like silly things. Not silly, but things that they're just not even a concern. Well, they are, but they're more like pain points. And it's like, you have to get over that. I have to get over that. And what I'm realizing is that it has to come from within. Like every time I remember, wait, like, wait a minute, the meaning of my life is like Jesus Christ and the Eucharist and wanting to go to heaven and, um, you know, and having that love like burst from within, radiate from within by going to him. Every time I remember that, it's like, okay, that's a good reminder of how I'm supposed to approach this. Because every time I go back to like the old approach, which is like this, I'm, I can do this, you know, with the maximum, with my maximum human capability. I mean, it's just so, it's so arrogant and so little like to me, like I'm just a guy, I'm just one person and I could team up with a whole lot of people, but we're all just people. And when I remember, you know, the way to do it, it's like I'm tapping into uh, like a superpower almost. The Holy Spirit is the superpower that we can ask for. So. As long as I remember, I can sort of recenter myself. Let's remove the notes layer. So we get, because I was seeing that some of the sketchy um, parts in there. Uh, let's see. Just cleaning up the edges here because I missed some spots. I am gonna head into the church before going to work, maybe for like a little bit of a holy hour. Um, just some prayer time. I'm not sure how long I'll be if it's it'll be if it'll be an hour or not. But I, this is really important for me to have that center. It's so paramount because I mean I'm learning so many things about this time uh, about myself during this time period about my weaknesses my dependencies, my addictions. Um, you know, asking myself questions I've never really asked before, like, am I codependent? Um, you know, what, uh, like just just addressing what are my vices? What are, what are my weaknesses? And like being diligent about it and writing it down. That's something I need to do more. Had a, had a discussion with my sponsor today and he just encouraged me again to write things down because I can think about them and that's one thing and I'm, I'm the type of guy to like overthink and rethink and repeat thoughts. Um, but if I write it down, it'll become a little more concrete. I know that the regurgitation of it is part of the educational process, it's part of learning. That's why, you know, we have quizzes and tests. It's like, why do we have to do this quiz? You know, the kids in school. Well, you know, it, it helps you learn to do the quiz. It's not, you're not just being tested for a grade. The fact that you're even taking the quiz helps you reinforce these ideas. Um, and that's why I like being able to repeat tests and quizzes. You know, I, I didn't really have to retake a whole lot of stuff in school, but when it, when it comes to like online um, classes, they let you like retake some of the questions that you get wrong. And, or at least they'll tell you like what it is you got wrong when you, when you get the question wrong. And I think that's extremely helpful. Yeah. There's so many things that I feel like can be revolutionized through a business. Um, and what I'm realizing for me is that my supply is me. And yeah, like I said, I have the business model already to um, grow based on only supply and demand. Oh, I realize I'm missing belt buckles. So let's actually put that into the line art. Um, we'll go here, go black, make sure I'm in the right layer. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull it this way. that and let's get some belt holes in there something simple like that that looks nice okay so yeah we're gonna just color things one at a time so let's find a belt color let's get, get it like a nice dark leather kind of this desaturated brownish color 
um, let's even more even more desaturated let's keep it like within the green kind of like that might maybe I don't know if I want it to be redder but we would have to really desaturate to capture that color maybe even on the purplish side I don't know what color I'm going for here yeah kind of like this kind of more on the purplish side I didn't think I would have to go all the way there into the purple palette but yeah I maybe because it's still it's more of a cool color this desaturated purple Now I want to be meticulous about my painting process for all for all this work. Like I want to have the five value scale, and I want to like make sure it covers the whole thing. Um, it's I'm trying to up the quality of my work. Okay, so it, it's a white tank top, but if he's like let's say he's like sweaty, like I think this blue green is still going to be a part of it. So let's get this blue green, lighten it, and get a color like this. Let's desaturate a lot because we want it to be look white. Okay, something like this. That that'll do. Let's see what happens if I do this. Turn down the threshold. Yeah, turn as long as we turn down the threshold, it looks pretty good. So this um, a little bit too light. We're gonna bring it down. Yeah. We'll, we'll, let's see. Whoops. I keep merging down on accident. Um, and again, more into the green. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this will be our basis. Um, I want to create spots on his skin. Because if I bring back the frog guy references, which are these right here. You know, each of these frogs has like patterns on their skin. And real life frogs do too. So... We're gonna work in something. It seems to me that the the frogs have like a lip right above the upper lip. It changes color to a lighter color, and then the spots are on top. So the patterns and spots are on top. So that seems to be the case here with these guys. So let's actually figure that out. So we're gonna get a, a different base color. We'll get it on the palms too. We're gonna get to get a different base color. Yeah, Gamabunta has the palms. So we'll get here. We're going to pull it into the green a little more and lighten it, but stay the desaturated. We're going to lighten a lot more than that. Yeah, so right here, above, right above the lip. I want to desaturate it a little bit more. Keep things desaturated right now for the sketch. So... How far are we gonna go to the side here? We're gonna go here, and then I think we're just gonna move it down into the neck. I need to look at the frog references for this. Yeah, it's pretty much the front of their body has that color. Like if he were sitting down, where would the bottom of his body be? Right, so. So for this part, we are going to eye drop again. I mean, color drop. Increase the threshold a little bit. So we get a nice clean fill. Let's get in the mouth here. Darker. More on the red side. Let's get some black in the eyes and some yellow in the eyes. The whites of the eyes will be yellow. Four oh three. I have work in about an hour, so I'm going to head into the church pretty soon, do a little bit of prayer. And then head to work. This looks really cool. It looks really cool. 
yeah, we can definitely go somewhere with this. Um, it, I think it's just a matter of time now. Just got to work in the color, trust the process. But yeah, we'll work on this more maybe a little bit later tonight or if it's not too late. But definitely uh, within the next week, we'll have this done and then start working on that mural. So I'll talk to you guys later. Made some good progress today. Thanks y'all for listening. God bless. Bye-bye.